how best to play the game of life. Now, if you believe Game of Thrones, it's best to be selfish, look after yourself, and exploit your enemy when they're at their weakest, even if it's their own wedding. But is this really the best strategy for real life? You might think that survival of the fittest is the strategy that animals have used to avoid elimination. But scientists have explored social behaviours in animals and actually found that being selfish and deceptive generally doesn't pay off. Broadly speaking, the opposite is true. The best strategy for an individual's genes is to cooperate as part of a larger group. Scientists can explore these different strategies using an idealised game called the prisoner's dilemma. In any meeting, an animal or a person can choose to behave in one of two ways. They can either cooperate or they can cheat. So if you can imagine the outcomes, one either knocks over the other or is knocked over by the other, or they both cooperate or they're both cheated on by each other. Now, the order of these rewards in this meeting is important. Uh, worst of all is being cheated on, followed by if both parties are simultaneously cheating on each other. Cooperating is good, but the best reward of all is if you end up being the only cheater. Now, that means there's an incentive to be a cheat in the short term, but if you cheat all the time, you risk being cheated on in the longer term. So as long as cheating is caught out and punished, actually it ends up being much better if everybody cooperates. So in the long term, cooperation actually ends up giving you the, the best payoff and the best lasting strategy for all of the parties. In the same way, scientists can use computer simulations to look at how human and animal populations interact with each other using a combination of cooperating and cheating strategies to see which individuals, groups and strategies survive the best over time. It's developing game theory and the results are really interesting. Now, individuals in groups that selfishly pursue their own needs end up dying out in contrast to those in a group who cooperate and share their resources. It's kind of like karma in action. And it makes sense, right? You're much more likely to cooperate in future with somebody who hasn't cheated on you in the past. Now, this is known as tit for tat, and it's the most evolutionary stable strategy tested. And in groups where tit for tat is the strategy, they tend to cooperate and end up doing well. But this doesn't mean tit for tat in the sense of an eye for an eye. It's more that non-cooperation is punished with non-cooperation. Now, as long as cheating is called out by some people and people stop cooperating with somebody as soon as they break the cooperative agreement, the cooperating people will spread and dominate. Working together, they will overcome the rogue cheats who think that they can ride the benefits of a cooperative society without pulling their weight. Selfish individuals will end up being outcompeted and rare in a society of cooperative individuals backing themselves up with a reputation economy. If the majority of people can accept a fair share of the resources, then cooperation will always end up being the dominant strategy, even if initially there are only a few people cooperating. Now, the result is born out in nature. Almost every species cooperates in terms of living, sleeping and eating. There's safety in numbers. But how does this relate to the success of solitary animals? Well, lots of big predators tend to hunt in packs even though they live alone, like lions. And even when animals are spread out, they're doing so in a way which shares a number of resources, things like food and shelter, but also reducing conflict. And in situations where animals do find themselves in conflict over a mate, say, they tend to do it in a very low-cost way, like having a dance-off or clashing antlers, rather than in having a fight to the death. Now, there are some conditions where solitary animals do really well. Animals like the big-headed mole rat. But it can only do that in situations where conditions are really good and it can be as greedy as it likes. 
If you compare that with its super cooperative cousin, the naked mole rat, they can survive really well in modest conditions and also probably because they all know that being naked is great. An example of less is more in the natural world. So, contrary to rumour, science as well as religion tells us that being nice to each other really is the best way to behave. And if you believe in God, then cooperation comes with its own massive reward. But if you don't, science still shows us that it's the best way to live our lives. Ultimately, your motives don't really matter. The maths will pay out either way. You might have heard of the golden ratio before. It's a number that comes from taking a line and cutting it in two, but in such a way that the ratio of the shortest segment to the longest is the same as the ratio of the longest to the original line.